This is the brand new Rock Robotic R2A LiDAR, and this is the DJI M210 drone. And that right there, these are high voltage transmission lines. Today, we're gonna to be making a 3D model mapping these high voltage transmission lines with this LiDAR system. And what our goal is to do is to make a perfect 3D model so that we can see if there's any trees that are close to those high voltage power lines. And the only way to do that is to get really, really good 3D data. So let's go and start flying. Transmission lines are the arteries that carry the power to our communities. This makes them a part of our critical infrastructure and means they need to be maintained. One of the key components to maintaining these transmission lines is making sure there's no trees touching the wires. Because if a tree touches the wire, it could spark a fire and that could be a big problem. So what we're doing today is we're using this laser scanner on a drone to make a 3D model and actually calculate how close all those trees are to the wires. So that 3D model is being generated by this device right here. This right here attached to the drone, that is a LiDAR laser scanner. And what this is doing, it's actually sending out hundreds of thousands of laser pulses every second from this device right here. And each one of those laser pulses is making a 3D accurate representation of the world. And from that data, we can then process it and find all the trees, the wires, and see where everything is located relative to each other. So using this drone, we're actually able to get a full 3D environment of the world and then use this to do inspections of those power lines and the vegetation that's close to it. So now let's go ahead and just jump up in the air, but a couple more things at the end of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and just walk through exactly how I'm gonna process this data. I'll show you that data, I'll upload it to the cloud, you'll be able to see it yourself. It's gonna be really cool, so stay tuned for that part as well. Gotta get up in the air now. Right, we just finished flying for the day. We got the whole circuit captured from substation to another substation. And now let's go back to the office. I'm gonna go ahead and process this data, show it to you and host it online so you can all see it for yourself. Let's get going. All right, welcome to my temporary outdoor office. So we just got done flying from that substation to the other substation. And now I'm gonna go over how to process this LiDAR data. The first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to use the pre-processing software from Rock Robotic, which is gonna take the data that was on the USB stick and the GPS data on the base station and turn this into a colorized point cloud. After that's done, we can then upload that data to the Rock Cloud and use the Rock Corridor app in order to actually classify and process the data. So that way we can make the measurements to the power lines, to the trees, and we can also get all the planimetrics made on the Rock Corridor app as well. So the first thing we're gonna do is do the pre-processing. I'm gonna jump right in and put the USB stick into the computer and start doing that. All right, so the LiDAR created some folders here. I'm gonna open this one. And we have this PPK file, the PC master product file. I'm just gonna double click on that. And this opens up the PC master software. And the first thing it starts doing, it starts processing the data. That's well, pretty much that easy, guys. Uh, you just gotta open it up, and there it goes. Right now, it's asking me for the precise location of the base station, so that's this guy. And if you know the exact location of this, it's surveyed in, or you use a Opus or a third-party solution to get a precise GPS location, you just put those three numbers in here, the latitude, longitude, and the ellipsoidal height, and this will make your data not only precise relative to itself, but accurate to the surface of the Earth as well. So I'm just gonna click that, and now it's gonna start processing the GNSS trajectory. There you go. Now, the software has an iterative approach, so it's actually going to 
iterate several times through the data to get more and more accurate. And this is why the RTK solution, so in real time, it doesn't do as good as post-processing. Because in post, you can kind of go through that many times and keep optimizing, optimizing to get that very, very, very accurate data. So now let's just go ahead and let the software do its thing and we'll sit back until it gets done and I'll join you back here in a few seconds once that's done. All right, the pre-processing just finished. So I'm gonna go ahead and select to start my data right here. And then I'm gonna end it right here. And let that populate the screen. There we go. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just click Produce LES. And now it's saving the 3D LES file, the LiDAR data. The next step is to open up the PPK PC Painter project file. And what this is doing is going to import the LiDAR data as well as all the photos. And this is gonna colorize the point cloud. All right, so the software just imported the LAS LiDAR data and it imported all the photos and their positions on the trajectory. So one of the cool things you can do is actually you can right click and you can select and you can actually see right there, you can see the photo overlaid on the LiDAR data before you produce it. So you can use this for alignment purposes, but really all you have to do is click Produce LAS because all the calibration's already been done. That's all good. All I did is double click this software, it imported the photos, and I click Produce LES. And there we go. Now we have a colorized geo-reference point cloud. And so to recap exactly what I did, all I did was plug in that USB drive, put the file from the base station on there. I double clicked on the project file for the PC master. This then asked me the precise location of this. I put it the latitude, longitude, and ellipsoidal height for this location. And then I just let it go. It produced the trajectory, it did all of the calibration, and then all I had to do is select where I want to start and end on that trajectory to generate that point cloud. After this, I simply double click the PC Painter file. It brought that trajectory, that point cloud in, as well as all the photos, and it generated the colorized point cloud. So now, at the end of the day, we have a colorized georeference point cloud and just a couple clicks. So the next step is to get deliverables made and to share the data. So for this, we're using the Rock Cloud. We're gonna go ahead and jump onto the Rock Cloud, upload the data, and then go to the Rock Corridor app and get the deliverables made. So let's go ahead and jump into that. All right, so I went ahead and uploaded the LiDAR data set and made a new project here in the Rock Cloud and I called it Urban Transmission Indiana Drones. So let's take our first look at that LiDAR data. Here we go, that is our first look at the colorized LiDAR da data from the R2A and it looks pretty darn good. I mean, check this out. Let's go ahead and zoom back out. Let's get a little higher view. You can see the buildings, the trees, you got the power lines over here. But next thing we're gonna have to do is we actually have to get this classified in order to then, you know, label the wires, label the trees, so we can see clearly how close those wires are to these trees. Because right now, it's just a little difficult to see. Let's come over here to Marketplace and we're going to click on the Rock Corridor app and we're going to go ahead and order that. So, there we go. And now we got to sit back and wait for the processing to finish. All right, the Rock Corridor app has finished processing. Let's take a look at that LiDAR data. Oh, yeah. That is it. So now we got the power lines, the trees, the road, the buildings, cars. Everything is classified and look at that. Look how easy it is to see. This tree was cut out in order to make room for these transmission lines to come through. So you can even see right there, This look how that perfect cut in those trees. Now, this data is gonna make it so easy to monitor this vegetation and just maintain and make sure it's not growing. Cause these trees are gonna keep growing. So using this, we can clearly see clear as day how close those trees are to those wires. And then of course, simulating the wind and the sag and the line and how it's gonna sway back and forth. You know, if it's really windy, it's gonna you know, swing and hit these trees, these trees gonna come and hit the wire, all of that, all of it's important.
All right, there you go. That was the Rock R2A LiDAR on the DJI M210 drone flying from substation to substation along a transmission corridor. We saw the pre-processing step of how to actually generate the colorized 3D point cloud, and then we uploaded it to the Rock Cloud and used the Rock Corridor app to generate the classified LiDAR data set. So if you guys want to know more about this, just leave a question, question or a comment below. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, and share the video. Uh, it really helps us out. And we'll see you guys next time here on Indiana Drones.